All right, here's the deal. I have a highway and I need to get pedestrians from one side to the other. What's the best way to do this? We could make a tunnel, but then you won't be able to appreciate the design as much. So I think the best course of action is to design a pedestrian bridge. In this video, we're gonna cover each of the basic sections of a pedestrian bridge. We're gonna talk about the design and then the underlying structural engineering concepts. Before we go any further, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Just one click makes a huge difference in the growth of the channel, and it means more and higher quality content for everyone. All right, we have this area that crosses a highway and has a median in the middle. It would be pretty unrealistic to have the bridge span the entire length without a center support. On either end, we will build abutments. The purpose of these are just to prevent lateral or horizontal movements. The surface in which people will walk or bike across is called decking. We obviously need railings, but I want to do a double layer of railings with one of those layers being two meters high since we can't have people accidentally falling off onto the highway. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add these fancy rectangles that surround the top of the bridge, and we're also going to add some horizontal lines that serve zero purpose aside from decoration. I'm not going too crazy with the design because I don't want to distract from the other bridge that crosses the river. One thing I should point out is that the lowest point of the bridge that hangs over the highway should be at least nine blocks above. This just makes it so that trucks won't hit it when they drive underneath. Okay, we have it all planned out, so let's get started. Let's start with the abutments. Let's go at roughly a 45 degree slope and follow the shape of the highway. We don't want it to be too steep because we want gravity to work in our favor. It's important to understand the basics of how soil puts pressure on foundations, retaining walls, and abutments. I'm going to use the example of a flat retaining wall, but keep in mind that the concept can be applied to many different shapes. Let's say, as an example, we have some soil that needs to be kept in place by a retaining wall. Let's say this pit is 5 meters deep and we can divide it into 5 equal parts. Soil never wants to stay in a perfect cube, it will always want to spread itself outwards until the angle of repose is reached. This angle is different depending on the material, moisture content, and a bunch of other factors. Okay, let's find out how soil behaves in terms of exerting pressure on a retaining wall. The very top of the first layer should theoretically exert no pressure. However, as we go down, the second layer also has the weight of the first layer on top, which will increase the horizontal pressure for section two. This trend continues down to the bottom, which means the very bottom of the retaining wall has to deal with the most horizontal pressure. Keep in mind that this is an approximation and can vary greatly depending on the circumstance. Okay, great. But why do we design our bridge abutments on an angle? Let's say you're in line at Tim's to get some Timbits. Some guy walks in, he walks up to you and cuts in front of you in line, and you're like, hey buddy, what's the big deal? And he's like, I see there's only 10 Timbits left and I want all of them. You say, no way buddy, back in the line, those Timbits are mine. But this guy's mean and decides to try and physically push you out the door. And you're not gonna let him because you want those Timbits. Now here's where the application of 45 degree bridge abutments comes in. If you stand up straight and let him push you, he's likely going to win, but if you push back with your body on an angle, you stand a much better chance at getting your Timbits. Anyway, let's get back to the bridge. Since we can't have a clear span across the entire highway, we need to have a central support. Let's build a support connecting to the median, and on top we can have a cap to help distribute the force. If we don't have the cap, we run the risk of having a punching shear failure. Now, we can add the girders. All girders are beams, but not all beams are girders. Typically large beams are referred to as girders. Okay, so let's go back to the top of the abutments real quick. I'm adding this black color to signify that the type of connection is a roller. In first and second year structural engineering courses, they teach you about the three main type of supports, fixed, pins, and rollers. Fixed is as the name implies, you can't move the connection out the support. Pins are interesting because they resist horizontal and vertical movement, but they can rotate if you allow them to. Rollers are the most interesting because this support can actually move in one of the two directions, either horizontal or vertical, but not both. I know this sounds really weird, but let me explain. Let's say you have a bridge. On this bridge is a truck. Since no material is ideal, you will have to have a small deflection. Wait a minute, if you have a deflection, that means the surface of the bridge now has a very small curve to it. If this bridge is fixed on both sides, the laws of mathematics dictate that the curved surface is ever so slightly longer than the flat surface. This means that your material has to be somewhat elastic or stretchy if you want to call it that. Newsflash, concrete isn't very stretchy. So if we revisit the design, let's replace one side with a pin and the other side with a roller. Since both sides can now rotate and the roller can move side to side, it no longer has to try and stretch the bridge. 
But wait, if the bridge moves, won't there be a gap? Yes, there will be, you are correct. Have you ever wondered why there's these seemingly useless metal strips at the start and end of bridges? These are called expansion joints, and they are used mostly for that reason, but also to accommodate for vibrations and thermal expansion or contraction. Okay, now that we've completed the bridge substructure, we can move on to the superstructure. We can add little drainage holes for water and change the decking material. At this point, we could add railings and call it a day, but I want it to look nice. We can add the rectangles, mess with the materials a little bit, and then duplicate it on either end. You can see that the width of the deck flares out at the end, so to make the rectangle fit, we have to cut it back. Hold on, pause. Before we go any further, we need to figure out how to actually attach the horizontal elements. The easiest way is just to make the vertical parts one block wide. Since it's a bit more thick now, let's also add a second brace across the top for stability. Now let's add some railings. I'm using jungle fences and jungle fence gates alternating in the wooden hills biome and cubes pack. I also don't want people accidentally falling over the railing onto the highway, so let's add some glass panes two blocks tall along the entire length. Now we can add in our expansion joints and the horizontal connections between the big rectangles. Again, these serve no purpose aside from helping frame the shape of the superstructure. Let's now duplicate it on either side. For the final touch, we can add a divider on the top of the decking with some lighting. I'm not a huge fan of the lantern, so let's go with some glowstone instead underneath the center line. All right, that's it. That's a pedestrian bridge. If you want to see me make another bridge, but this time going really hardcore on it, hit the like button to let me know. I'll dive into elastic material properties, rebar placement, support calculations, and lots of other good stuff. Also, check out www.alpinearch.com. I have some pretty sleek champion branded hoodies and shirts, but I'm only keeping them up for a short while longer, so get them quick. I'm wearing one of the hoodies right now so I can confirm they hold up to Canadian winters. Anyway, I'm Matt, and thanks for watching.